to the campus of Boise State University and welcome to the All-State Game of the Week on ESPNU. We come to you live from Lyle Smith Field at Bronco Stadium. Today, Hawaii is in town to take on number four Boise State in a huge whack game. How huge is it? Well, the standings tell the story. Hawaii and Boise State, the only teams unbeaten in conference play so far. Hawaii with two games in hand. And we welcome you to Boise State for what we expect to be a great offensive showdown. Pam Ward along with former Florida State and NFL quarterback Danny Cannell. Olympic gold medalist Jessica Mendoza is also with us this week. Hawaii, simply put, the best passing game in the nation, fueled by their quarterback, Bryant Moniz. Bryant Moniz, one of the most prolific passers in all the FBS. Outstanding, absolutely lighting up the charts. Large part in due because he runs the run-and-shoot offense, but also because of his slot receivers, Greg Salas and Kealoa Polaris, they get most of the balls and most of the beneficiaries of what he does. You look at what he's done, 3,200 yards, leading the nation in passing. His closest competitor, Landry Jones at Oklahoma, 700 yards behind him. Very much behind Moniz. His team has really been on a great winning streak, tearing up the wax so far, but their best test and biggest test so far, certainly in conference this year, is Boise State, a team that has won 21 straight games overall, the longest active winning streak in the nation, and they have a quarterback who's a Heisman hopeful in Kellen Moore. Kellen Mark Moore, when he runs this offense, you look at what he does, it's almost flawless, his execution, the way he spreads the football around, makes decisions, uses the protection by getting rid of the football, getting them into solid plays, and boy, he has some outstanding targets to throw to. Austin Pettis, his leading receiver, is a dynamic receiver can get downfield and Titus Young when you look at these two wide receivers I believe they're the strongest wide receiving tandem in the entire country and we will see some Boise State career records broken today between the wide receivers and their quarterback Kellen Moore and the numbers uh, really bear it out all these guys uh, moving up the charts as far as their career numbers go Titus Young about to make a big jump and Austin Pettis with two catches will break a school record for receptions Boise State on to the blue turf, getting ready to take on Hawaii. Kickoff just moments away. About to get underway here, Boise State taking on Hawaii on the, the very famous blue turf in Boise. For more on that, let's go to the third member of our team, Jessica Mendoza. That's right, Pam. When you think of Boise State playing at home, it's hard not to think about the infamous blue turf they play on. Combine that with an almost all-blue uniform, and it's easy to see why a lot of teams think of it as a disadvantage to help camouflage an already scheming Boise State offense. Hawaii coaches, they see it more as a myth, a mindset to overcome. But whether it's a myth or a mindset, the fact remains that Boise State has never lost a whack home game since they joined the conference in 2001. So odds are, for Hawaii to beat Boise State at home today, it'll be about as easy as spotting a blue uniform on blue turf. Thank you, Jessica. And it is kind of, they do blend in, that's for sure. And I know some coaches around the country have talked about that, but Danny Cannell, you're not a true believer in that, hey? I'm not. I'm more in Coach Peterson's camp that, you know, it's in the other team's head, which is all that matters. <laughs> As people come in here, they're intimidated by it. Hawaii won the toss. They want the ball first. Trevor Harmon with the kickoff. Kyle Brotsman will be back for place kicks. Dustin Blunt gets the opening kickoff for Hawaii. Loses the football, but it goes momentarily out of bounds. Hawaii averts disaster on the opening kickoff by getting the ball. Great return by Blunt. Hits it up in there, but boy, in the first drive of the game, you have to make sure you secure the football. Boise State almost gets it back, but can't do it. Justin Clapp, freshman wide receiver, saving the day so far for the Warriors. So here's our first look at Bryant Moniz from the island of Oahu. Walked onto the football team and was a fifth or sixth string safety before they switched him over to quarterback, and now he's the most prolific passer in the nation. With the run and shoot, here's the first of many throws. Moniz with time, first down, completed to the 32-yard line to Royce Pollard, picked up 12. 
A lot is at stake today. Hawaii, the last team, the last WAC team to beat Boise State. Last time was in 07 when Hawaii won the WAC, went on to the Sugar Bowl and lost to Georgia. And oh yeah, Boise State, 21 straight wins, hoping to get a chance at the national championship, but they have to remain undefeated to do so. Alex Green standing behind the quarterback, Moniz. Sends it over into the flat, off the hands of Greg Salas, who is usually very short-handed. Here are today's impact players brought to you by Russell Athletics, and we start with the running back, Alex Green. Alex Green doesn't get a lot of recognition because they don't run the ball much, but the last four games, over 100 yards, could be an impact player today. Greg Salas, the slot receiver, is their leading receiver and one of Bryant Moniz's favorite targets. And Winston Venable on the other side is the energy guy for Boise State's defense. Senior out of California, Salas's rare drop makes it second and 10. Moniz under pressure, throws in the general vicinity of Rodney Bradley, and that brings up a third and 10 for the Warriors. Hawaii's head coach, Greg McMacken, took over for June Jones when he went back to the mainland to be SMU's head coach. McMacken was a coordinator under Jones and a guy who deflects all of the praise for the team's recent success to his players and assistant coaches. Really enjoyed sitting down and talking with Coach McMacken. Just an enjoyable conversation. Really looks like he's taking on the Hawaii atmosphere. Nice and laid back. Third and 10, Moniz in a bunch of trouble and he goes down. Sacked by Chase Baker. The big nose tackle got in there. That's the 22nd time a Hawaii quarterback has been sacked this year. And this is how you're going to stop Hawaii's offense. You get after the quarterback, pressure him, don't give him a chance to go through his reads, and you do it with four down linemen rushing so you can drop seven into coverage. Need those guys in coverage with the run and shoot. Alex Dunaki from Australia is the punter. Chris Potter gets the return, and that's a good tackle taken down from behind by a backup linebacker for Okela Ahmad. Kellen Moore leads Boise State out for the first time when we come back. Welcome back to Boise State. Another sold-out crowd on hand. Hawaii able to pick up a first down in its first possession, but ultimately had to punt it away. And now the first time that we see Boise State with the football, the highest-scoring team in the WAC, second in the country, averaging just under 48 points per game. And the junior quarterback, Kellen Moore, leading the way. 18 touchdowns, two interceptions. Last year, uh, just uncanny, 39 touchdowns and only three picks. Moore comes out slinging, and that goes through the hands of Austin Pettit. Had he caught that, he would have tied Don Hutt's record for the most passes ever caught by a Boise State receiver. Second and 10, quickly back to the line. Lots of time for Moore. He has a wide open target and a big first down to Tyler Shoemaker, the former walk-on who is coming off a career-high day last week, picks up 21 yards. Tyler Shoemaker, the beneficiary of Austin Pettis and Titus Young on the outside, really leaves a lot of open space in the middle of the field. In the last game a week ago Tuesday when they beat Louisiana Tech 49-20, first flags of the game come in. Robert Cameron, our referee of this WAC crew. And offensive coordinator Brian Harrison told us that they were going to work a little more no huddle to try to offset Hawaii's aggressive defense. Already they're showing an increased tempo early in the game. There's Harson's boss, Chris Peterson, fifth year in charge. The head coach here since 2006 was the coordinator for five seasons before that, the national coach of the year last year. First and 15 for his Broncos. More, plenty of time. Coming out of the backfield to catch it is Doug Martin. Martin slips a tackle and gets down to the 36-yard line, picks up 11. Let's take a look at today's impact players brought to you by Russell well, Athletics, and it's the receivers. Two of the best right here, Austin Pettis going for a school record, and Titus Young 
also looking to move up the record books today. Danny thinks they're the best tandem in the nation. Wide open, Pettis making it look easy as he is out of bounds, picking up a first down. And really early on, you can see Hawaii's defense a little off balance. Kellen Moore with all day to throw, finds Austin Pettis down the field, but right now looking pretty easy for Boise State. And with that catch, Pettis has tied Don Hutt with 189 career catches. In the red zone, there's the run. Martin doesn't get much at all. Martin coming off a career high day himself against Louisiana Tech. Well, he ran for 150 yards. 107 of those 150 came in the second half. Boise State continues to go no huddle. And on second down, Moore finds Martin out of the backfield, breaks a tackle, taken down by Kamulo Umu. But Martin is close to a first down. He fumbled it, and Hawaii gets the football. So he was close to a first down, but lost it. Kellen Moore looking downfield, has a lot of time to throw, eludes the rush, dumps it off to Martin, trying to pick up some extra yards. That's the danger zone when you're trying to get those extra yards. That's when the ball comes out. You see the security just not there, but a great play by Kumalu Uma, Umu, knocking the ball out. And Hawaii, very opportunistic, gets the turnover early. Jeremy Bryant was able to jump on the football for Hawaii. Hawaii absolutely dominating the turnovers, 26 turnovers on the season. That was their 27th. Here's the run by Alex Green, who has given them an entirely different dynamic. You don't have to just worry now about the four receivers. You have to worry about Alex Green running the football. You see Alex Green in the pistol formation, finding a nice hole to the right side. Nick Rolovich, offensive coordinator for Hawaii, said it's such an advantage for when, when the defense has to cover five guys instead of just the four wideouts. Just when they have that, they have to hold them honest just a little bit more when they have to think about the running back, and that's what Alex Green brings to this Hawaii offense. And Green's carry netted 23 yards, so they have it first down on the 30. Here comes the blitz from Boise. Salas catches the pass, and he gets about four yards. Jaron Johnson making the stop, has been leading this team in tackles the last couple of years, and there is the baby offensive coordinator. <laughs> we all remember when Nick Rolovich was the quarterback at Hawaii. He's only 31 years old. He was an outstanding quarterback in his own right here, running this run-and-shoot offense. Really has a great grasp of it. Only 31 years old, one of the youngest offensive coordinators in the entire country. He said it's hard to be wrong calling plays in this offense. Love's doing it. First year in which he is the offensive coordinator calling the plays. Here's a second and six. Moniz hits his target, who was immediately hit after a four-yard gain. George Iloka hitting Dustin Blunt. And that brings up a third and two for Hawaii. There's Hawaii's defensive coordinator, Dave Aranda, he's only 33 years old. You mentioned the babies. Man, they got both of them on both sides of the ball. Meanwhile, Mouse Davis, who created the run and shoot as a wide receiver coach at Hawaii, he's 78. So he is 14 years older than their combined ages. Here's a third and two. Boise shows blitz. Here they come. Moniz gets rid of it in time and picks up the first down. Up at the 46-yard line, Rodney Bradley, who has been sort of their vertical stretch guy, picks up eight. Boise State blitzing early, but a good job protection. You see Alex Green is a great runner, but he does a great job in pass protection, very unselfish. The problem is when you run against the run and shoot and you do blitz, you're going to have man-to-man -man matchups on a lot of wide receivers out in open space. Very risky. Pete Kwiatkowski, the defensive coordinator for Boise, said that he would have to be very selective with the blitzes because of that reason. First down for the Warriors on their own 46. Moniz under pressure over the head of Rodney Bradley, his intended receiver. 
And so much of this offense is geared toward wide receivers reading their routes. And a lot of times you'll see throws like that where it looks like there was just a miscommunication because they weren't on the same page. Because of that, there has to be a great feel between the quarterback and the receivers. And every once in a while, they won't be on the same page, so it looks like a busted route, but it was just somebody misreading. Over 3,000 yards this season, 32-47 coming into this game for Moniz. Second and 10. Four-man rush, and there's the run game. Alex Green, he loses the football. But he was able to jump back on top of it. Both teams a little sloppy early on. Third time, the ball has hit the ground. You see the draw to Alex Green and just loses the football, just slipped right out of his hand. And you saw them run the draw. That's basically their entire run game. It's based off the draw action because they throw it so much. Just teams have to respect that draw action. Second carry for him. Remember, he had 23 yards on the first carry. That time he lost four. Brings up a third and 14. Moniz goes down for the second time today. A flag comes in. Shea McClellan, a sophomore from Caldwell, Idaho, with the sack. Holding, number 66 offense. Please decline, fourth down. Adrian Thomas from Australia, the right guard called for the hold. Here's Boise State bringing pressure off the edge. Watch him bring two guys off the edge to pressure Moniz. Alex Green tries to pick him up, but they're just simply outmatched there. They actually had the numbers game where they wanted it, but the man-to-man -man matchups, when you don't have help on that right tackle, Shea McMillan's pretty tough to pick up in that situation. They're very excited about McClellan. Good young talent, second sack of the game for Boise. Danaki's second punt, and that goes out of bounds. Marked at the 24-yard line. That's where Boise State takes over after a 41-yard punt. Welcome back to Boise State. No points. We played seven minutes, had three possessions, and no one scored. Somewhat of a surprise between these two teams. Danny, what do you have? Kellen Moore, you look at what he does on this offense. Basically, you can turn it into seven-on-seven seven drill because they do such a good job in pass protection. He finds the best matchups on the field. He finds the press coverage on the outside. All he has to do is keep the safety in the middle of the field, and he drops in the fade route almost perfectly, better than anybody in the country to Titus Young, even a better catch. Here they are down in the red zone against Oregon State. Oregon State tries to stack the line, get eight guys involved in the run game. When they do that, the safety's alone on an island. He's got two posts coming right at him. He's got to choose one of them. He takes the first one. Kellen Moore beats him to, or throws it to Austin Pettis on perfect timing. You look at the execution, it's almost flawless. Kellen Moore last season at Hawaii. Five touchdowns, that's a career high. Boise State won that game 54 to nine. They led 44 to nothing at one point. Here's the false start. Hold the ball, three snaps. Ball start, number 59, offense. Five yard penalty, first down. Pam, when you look at the start of this game, this is not the start that Coach Peterson wanted, especially coming off their sloppiest performance of the year in their last game against Louisiana Tech. Already they've put it on the ground. They've had a couple penalties. Not the execution they're used to here in Boise. Second false start of the game already for the Broncos. Moore gets Martin out of the backfield on a good downfield block. Uh, Geraldo Hewat, one of the receivers, to pick up eight yards. Martin was a guy. Go ahead, Danny. Here's a design swing pass. Get the ball in Doug Martin's hands early. Watch Paredes come over and absolutely lay the wood to the wide receiver there. That'll make him think about blocking. Martin gets nothing on that carry. Daniela Tuipulotu making the stop. A junior out of Lahaina on the island of Maui. 
And Boise's game plan was come out to the no huddle, and it looks like they're almost going faster than the, what they're used to. They don't look as comfortable in their offense. 36 more. That's perfectly thrown to Tyler Shoemaker. Shoemaker, the former walk-on, really making a statement. That's a 23-yard game. They didn't look too affected there, though, Pam. You see Shoemaker coming off the big week. The coaches said they noticed a boost in confidence, catching more balls in practice. But I really feel like he's been the benefactor of the guys on the outside. That middle of the field is wide open. Martin tries the left side of the line and picks up a couple. Tyler Shoemaker, a career-high 124 yards on six catches in their last game against Louisiana Tech. A game that they only won by 29 points. And for Boise State, big wins are big for them. That's a tremendous catch by Austin Pettis. Stuck his hands out, hauled it in for a first down. If you're, going to if you're going to teach a wide receiver how to catch the football and run routes, watch Austin Pettis, number two, coming on the end route. But watch him use his hands. He uses all ten fingers on that football. Great job of looking that football in. Moore. A little post pattern to Pettis once again. That's his third catch. Austin's second catch, the one before this, that set a new Boise State record for most career catches. Boise State and Kellen Moore really finding their rhythm on this drive. Kellen Moore throws on timing probably better than anybody in the country. Hit Austin Pettis before he came out of his break. Martin right up the middle. Taken down at the 15. Haku Correa making the stop. This is the second trip into the red zone for Boise. Came up empty last time because Martin fumbled the, the ball away. And now Kellen Moore goes out of the game. Chris Potter looks like he's going to be running the Wildcat. They use four different guys to run the Wildcat, and indeed it is Potter. Former quarterback, now a wide receiver on the roster. And a double handoff. Avery ends up with it. He gets a good block and goes into the end zone. Dan Paul, the fullback, number 47, sprung him on the outside for the score. There is a lot of misdirection in this Boise State offense. Starts right here out of the Wildcat formation. Chris Potter, who they trust. Here comes the double handoff, and you'll see it coming this way as well. But watch Chris Potter out in front with the block. Opens up the lane for the touchdown for Boise. Boise State saw something they liked it on the, on the extra point formation, tried to toss it out to the outside, but Hawaii was all over it. That was Jeremy Avery, the guy who scored the touchdown, unable to get the, the extra point, so it's 6-0. Boise State breaking out on top of Hawaii, and they do it in true Boise State fashion with a double handoff and the score by Avery. ESPNU College Football All-State Game of the Week. Brought to you by All-State. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects you like All-State. Are you in good hands? Welcome back to Boise. Unseasonably warm here, about 70 degrees. Even though that baby's all bundled up. <laughs> Beautiful day in Boise. Chris Peterson's team breaks on top six to nothing. Failed two-point conversion after the Jeremy Avery 15-yard rushing touchdown. Every game this year, Boise State has scored first, but this was only the second time they have not scored on their first possession. That's how good this offense has been. Trevor Harmon kicks it off. Blunt waits inside his five. Blunt with the football. Gang tackled around the 30-yard line. Well, last time we showed you the action in the backfield, but look at the big boys up front. Dan Paul, the fullback, and the pulling guard come around to lead the way, which really opened up the touchdown run by Jeremy Avery. And also the great block by Chris Potter, the Wildcat quarterback in there as well. Seventh rushing, rushing touchdown of the season for Avery. Grant Moniz. And Hawaii, the 
best passing team in the country, taking on a Boise State defense that is third best in stopping it. Onisal shovel pass. Good escape ability by Alex Green. Picked up a couple of tough, hard-earned yards. Let's get an update from Dari Noble. Dari. Pam, no doubt Boise fans closely watching TCU Utah, and it did not take TCU long. Andy Dalton and Josh Boyce, Horned Frogs leading in Salt Lake 7-zip. We will keep you posted all day long. Thank you, Dari. That game, as you mentioned, is absolutely huge to the folks here. Second and eight for Hawaii. Boise rushing four. Moniz overthrows his intended target. Rodney Bradley was well covered in the middle of the field. ESPN News coverage of college football continues tonight at 7 Eastern. Louisiana Lafayette takes on Ole Miss. And then at 10.30 Eastern, Bethune, Cookman, and Hampton. College football primetime presented by Five Ever Energy tonight on ESPNU. Here we have a 6-0 lead for Boise State, number four in the nation. Jeremy Avery with what is being called a 14-yard touchdown run officially now. And here's a third and eight for Hawaii. The two unbeaten teams in whack play. Moniz over the middle, had a man wide open, but he missed it. Dustin Blunt had some breathing room, but Hawaii's gonna have to punt. Back-to-back -back overthrows by Bryant Moniz, just struggling to find out the passing lanes that are given to him by this Boise State defense. And Boise State doing a great job mixing up coverages early on, bringing different amount of guys, blitzing occasionally, keeping Hawaii off balance. Now Chris Potter, who's the best punt returner in the WAC. Tudaki didn't want to give him a chance to return it as he kicked it out of bounds for the second time in this game. College football fans, time to put your college on the map. Build your own campus from scratch with ESPNU College Town. Find your school, pick your buildings, recruit players. More than 4 million users have started constructing their campus. Check it out. Be the dean.com to start playing. Can you build your own football field too? You know, I'm going to put in some blue turf on mine. Say, I'm gonna, I got to do that. You got to do that. <laughs> I want to run some trick plays in my offense, too. <laughs> well, you can find some right here today from uh, from Boise State. Kellen Moore leads them back out. Scored a touchdown on their last drive. Plenty of time to find Titus Young. Young picks up five yards on that catch. Jeremy Bryant making the stop. Young has now caught a ball in 38 straight games of the top 10 in several categories in Boise State receiving history. Martin stopped just a couple of yards downfield by Elliot Purcell. One of the things that amazes me, Pam, with Kellen Moore is the fact that he's only been sacked twice all season long. Really a credit to his boy, big boys up front, but also to Kellen Moore's knowledge of the offense, knowing where to get rid of the football, getting them in good situations. That pass complete to Young. He breaks a tackle and picks up the first down up at the 30-yard line. Really, there's so many different aspects of this Boise State offense. Dave Aranda talked about having a few sleepless, sleepless nights this week just thinking about all that he's going to have to face today, and Boise State's already shown him a, a whole lot. Remember the first pass was was dropped for Boise State, but 10 straight completions since then, and the offense keeps rolling with Doug Martin. Jamana Silva makes the stop, but it's another eight-yard gain for Martin. Moore and company quickly back up to the line. Hawaii's definitely not ready for this tempo at this point. Martin. Gets around the corner and gets the first down. Why had a couple of shots at him, but he picked up three to move the chains. Doug Martin, a great story, actually switched over from defense. Second best runner in the WAC. The coaches said they knew he was talented, but they didn't really know what to do with him. They put him in at running back, and he's been terrific. 
Moore, plenty of time over the middle. Pettis breaks himself free and gets another first down for the Broncos. Demetrius Davis that time with the stop. Kellen Moore doing a great job finding his secondary receivers, looking to the left side of the field, coming back to the right, making great decisions with the football. 11 straight completions. Avery's the running back. 12 straight completions. It's Gabe Linehan, tight end from the state of Oregon, picks up eight. They're playing without Tommy Gallardo, their number one tight end, who broke his foot last week, had surgery. They hope to have Tommy back for the bowl game, and they say they're really missing his leadership out there. Linehan filling in, getting the first down, or getting the catch, and now Avery gets the first down. The Boise offense clicking on these last couple of possessions. That's a nine-yard gain for Avery. Avery heading out, Doug Martin coming in. There's an injury, that's Will Lawrence, the right guard who is hurt on the, on the field. Will Lawrence, who led, he's the pulling guard, led on the touchdown earlier, also pulled on that play. It's good to see him up. Pam, I tell you, people talk about Oregon's offense and the tempo they run. Boise State would give them a run yeah. for their money this afternoon because was, they are hauling. I was just thinking about how much fun <laughs> that matchup would be. Of course, they played last year, and Oregon's offense didn't do anything. That was the first game of the season, the regular season. But, oh, my goodness, what a matchup that would be this year. They've already gone 55 yards in just over two and a half minutes, and now a timeout. Boise calls the timeout. They are almost, they have almost accumulated 200 yards of offense already. And here we are with a minute 30 left to go in the first quarter. The thing about it, too, is they're just methodically moving the ball downfield, taking three and four yards a clip in the run game, using a controlled passing game, but taking their shots down the field with Tyler Shoemaker. Really impressed with this offense. Boise State, the only team in the nation in the top five in both total offense and total defense. The offense gets a, a lot of publicity as well they should, but the defense has been terrific this year as well, giving up only about 13 and a half points per game. And the offense just dominating in the whack and right up there in the national stats. Let's go down to Jessica Mendoza on the field. Jess. When Boise State came out with the tunnel, you may have noticed the Shane McClellan was carrying the, sh the sledgehammer. The reason why? Coach Jeff Choate decided that blue work ethic mentality is something that Boise State represents. Why a sledgehammer? Because in football, you're either the hammer and the nail. In this case, they want him to be the hammer. Doug Martin gets the carry. That is that is a big, a big hammer. McClellan, a, a big guy. And there is Shea McClellan coming out. Carrying that big sledgehammer for Boise State. Team hammering away at this Hawaii defense. Another completion. This time to the running back, Martin. Picks up three. And there's a, there's a good look at that hammer. Could you handle that, Danny? No, I don't know. Not as well as Jessica did. <laughs> <laughs> Jess Mendoza, gold medalist for the United States softball team. The best hitter in the world, Danny. I know you were pretty good at Florida State, but my money's on Mendoza. I think so. I think you're right. <laughs> Moore, so calm, sidesteps trouble, had a man wide open in the end zone, but he went to his underneath guy, Austin Pettis. Well, was that Titus Young in the end zone? That was Shoemaker. Shoemaker, Shoemaker back there. I'm telling you, he is really the guy that's becoming the open receiver a lot of the time because so much of the defense is focused on Pettis and Young. Dave Aranda talked to us that Boise's going to make you do what you don't want to do. Hawaii likes to pressure the quarterback. That's why they're running this tempo. They're forcing Hawaii to run vanilla coverages. Third possession, third time. They've gotten into the red zone. Moore, pump fake, then gets it to Pettis as the first quarter comes to a close. Boise State takes a 6-0 lead into the second quarter thanks to Jeremy Avery's 14-yard touchdown run. They're knocking on the door again. Pettis setting the new record for career catches. And we're going to talk surfing as well when we come back. 
That's why quarterback Bryant Meniz of Hawaii, you can find him surfing during the offseason. But surfing in Idaho? It's a new concept here. I talked with Rob, Robert Geyer, owner of a shop called Even Surf, and they invented bungee surfing. They take a board, they put it into the water, go downstream, and then when they come up, they go 30 miles per hour up the river. Guys, people book surfing lessons, trips to Boise to surf. This is unbelievable. Hawaii is not the only team in the WAC that knows how to surf. To do that bungee surfing at the top of that, though, you saw Bryant Moniz. What's that paddleboard surfing? Yep, the stand up paddleboard. I'll hang with Bryant Moniz. That bungee surfing looks a little crazy. <laughs> First play of the second quarter. Doug Martin with the handoff doesn't do Thanks. much at all. Kellen Moore's done a lot. How about this? 15 of 16. He's hit his last 15 passes. Remember, the one he didn't complete was a drop on the first pass of the game. Uh, his efficiency is unlike anything I've ever seen at the quarterback position. Not only that, but the touchdown to interception ratio over the past two years is just phenomenal. He leads the bowl subdivision in pass efficiency, and obviously that's skyrocketing by hitting 15 of 16 so far this afternoon. Moore into the end zone. Touchdown. His 16th straight completion, it's Tyler Shoemaker emerging as a, another star receiver. Tyler Shoemaker, a former walk-on, really coming to his own in this offense. Finding that middle of the field has been wide open today. It was open last week against Louisiana Tech. And Kellen Moore is just able to drop it in over linebackers' heads with such precision. He was perfect on that drive. Kyle Bratzman in to add the extra point, battling a leg injury. So he is only going to do the place kicking today. Did not play at all last week against Louisiana Tech. Usually their punter and their place kicker. How about Tyler Shoemaker? Walked on it out of Meridian, Idaho. Has himself a touchdown catch. It's 13-0 Broncos. back number four Boise State now up 13 to nothing thanks to the third touchdown catch of the last two games by Tyler Shoemaker Tyler Shoemaker lined up in the slot watch him work to the back of the end zone but I want you to look notice how Kellen Moore drops it in to the only place in the field where there's space to drop this look at this four Hawaii defenders he drops it in above all of them in the safest place in the back of the end zone, which is a quarterback's best friend. You either miss that long or you throw a touchdown pass. Boy, and Dave Aranda's got to be scratching his head. It was well covered, as you mentioned, but it was a perfect pass. Moore now 16 for 17, 183 yards, and that touchdown pass. Shoemaker three catches for 56 yards and a touchdown. And that touchdown pass now puts Moore number one all by himself for most touchdown passes in the history of Boise State. Harmon in for the kickoff. One of the up men gets it for Hawaii. That's Jordan Monaco. Stop just short of the 30. Let's get a Utah TCU update from Dari. Well, Pam, is so far it's really been all TCU. Andy Dalton found Josh Boyce for a one touchdown. And then look at this. From their own seven, Dalton to his right. Throws Boyce to behind the defender. Then beats everybody. 93 yards, and it's TCU 14 zip already in Salt Lake City. Thank you, Dari. That is where our game day crew was, and the folks in Utah stunned. They are two of the five remaining unbeatens going head-to-head -head this afternoon. Let's see what Hawaii can do now down two scores, and that's a false start, so that play didn't even count. Before the ball could be snapped, false start. Number 51, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. Pam, you mentioned Dave Aranda having to make some adjustments on the defensive side of the ball. Well, Brian Moniz and this Hawaii offense really needs to just settle down, look at the type of offense they run. They're very capable of scoring points. 
So just calm down, execute your offense, and fight your way back into this football game. Bryant Moniz, the, the coaches really like him. They talk about how special he is, that he's cool, calm, nothing seems to bother him. Sort of a stereotypical Hawaiian. He's just 5 of 10 for 30 yards in this game so far. A leading passer in the nation struggling against the Boise D. And that pass is off the mark. Rodney Bradley, who has been his favorite target so far, the intended receiver, Jamar Taylor, had good coverage. There you see him, number 21. Hurt last year, unable to play, and now is uh, coming back and playing a solid corner. And this is really one of those gut check drives for Hawaii. Down 14 to nothing. Boise State's offense has been having its way. They need to respond and help their defense out. Second and 15. Hawaii averaging 39 points per game, 11th in the nation, getting skunked so far. Moniz does complete that for the first down. Royce Pollard to the short of the first down. They, that was a long way they had to go. Just running a little curl flat combination. Brian Moniz actually dropped his delivery down to three quarters to find a little window to pass in. But each pass that he completes at this point is a confidence builder because it, early on it's looked like his confidence has been shaken. So he's fighting with every play to get back into it. But Nick Rolovich said he's a confident player and he shouldn't be affected by this crowd. Picked up nine yards on that play, but they're still six yards short of the first. Just one of four converting third down so far. Showing blitz, here they come. Good protection, Moniz almost intercepted. Salas was the intended receiver, but George Iloka made a great break on the ball to knock it down. Back-to-back -back three and outs for this usually potent Hawaii offense. Moniz dropping back to pass, but number eight, George Iloka does a great job pursuing the football, getting that hand out, batting the pass down. Donaghy has to do a lot of punting today. Dunaki's punt fielded by Potter. Terrific punt return, but that punt returner, but that's good coverage as a flag comes in at the back of the play and some jawing down there between players on the field. 46-yard punt by Dunaki. Hawaii has four possessions and only three first downs in this game. After the play, personal foul on the 98 of the receiving team. Half the distance to the goal. First down, timeout. Ryan Winters, Swaika, starting defensive end on that special team getting call for the penalty. Boise State up 13 to nothing with the ball again. ESPNU College Football All-State Game of the Week. Brought to you by Jeep. Welcome back to Boise, Idaho. The Broncos leading Hawaii 13 to nothing. Kellen Moore has a touchdown pass in this one. Let's look at some key plays so far. Chris Peterson's team dominating. Well, the key plays have been all Boise State early on. Austin Pettis breaking the career reception mark for Boise State. And then on the double handoff, Jeremy Avery takes it in for the touchdown. And, and quickly they run a play, and it's a big one. Tyler Shoemaker, who has caught a touchdown pass today. The crowd erupts in cheers of Shoe as he picks up 35 yards. Kellen Moore has completed 17 straight passes. And they're not easy passes. He's, he's taking his shots down the field, too. That's what's so impressive. 18 straight. Titus Young this time, his turn to get the ball into Hawaii territory. He picks up seven. Pam, we started the open saying this was the best wide receiver tandem. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say <laughs> they might have the best wide receiving trio when you add in Shoemaker. Tyler Shoemaker really coming on in the last couple of games. A career high 124 yards in their last game against Louisiana Tech. And he already has a touchdown catch in this one. Avery. Taken down a couple of yards short of the first down. Only picked up about one. And Wise defense def desperately needs a spark. 
See the stop there on the handoff, but on their heels so far in this football game. Third and two, Boise's four for four on third downs so far. Wait, shifting. Moore completes yet another one right at the first down marker. That is indeed a first down. That's another tight end. Kyle Fall. Picks up four and they keep the keep the chains moving. Kyle Kellen Moore continues towards 10,000 career passing yards. He's now gone from fourth to second in this game alone. This one thrown up perfectly. No, just a little bit too long. Titus Young had many steps on Lemetrius Davis. And Moore finally misses a pass. Here he takes a shot on the fade route. No one throws it better than Kellen Moore. He's got Titus Young. He's got behind the defense just a little bit overthrown. Davis. Kellen Moore's streak is broken. Yeah, 19 straight, Danny, and then he uh, overthrew on that one. Davis actually fell down. Moore isn't going to throw two straight incompletions now, is he? He won one of three Dutch players on this team. Geraldo Hewat from the Amst from uh, Amsterdam picks up 16. Thing about it, Kellen Moore keeps the pedal to the metal. There's no let up in this offense. And you gotta figure this Hawaii defense is getting pretty gassed. No pass rush at all, Moore over the middle. Contact, Mana Silva with a good play to keep the ball away from Austin Pettis. Boise State, number four in the BCS standings, leading Hawaii 13-0 here in the second quarter. Pam Ward, Danny Cannell, and Jessica Mendoza joining you from sold-out Broncos Stadium. Jeremy Avery with a 14-yard touchdown run. A two-yard, or two-point conversion, excuse me, no good. And then Tyler Shoemaker caught a touchdown pass from Kellen Moore, who at one point had thrown 19 straight completions in this game. Boise with 289 yards of offense. There's the pitch to Avery, and he is taken down at the 23. Let's get to Dari Noka. Day TCU Utah, it is entirely Horned Frogs. This is the Wild Frog. Jeremy Curley, a receiver to Bar Johnson. Touchdown. They're up 20 zip, by the way. Oregon and Washington tied at three in the second, guys. Wow, only 3-3, three, three, Oregon and Washington. Washington playing without Jake Locker. Oregon usually scores, well, let's say a lot more than <laughs> I thought they were. I thought they were going to put up 70 today, so I'm, I'm in shock. Doug Martin back in at the running back position on a third and six for Boise. Empty backfield. Here comes the blitz. Moore gets rid of it, and it's caught by Linehan, the tight end, first and goal, Broncos. Is Moore just about the coolest quarterback going? He really is. I mean, Hawaii that time tried to blitz a couple middle li uh, linebackers through the middle, and Moore is not even phased by it. But I tell you what, it helps when you have that much confidence in your offensive line that they're going to protect you. Remember, there's only been three quarterback sacks of Boise all year. Moore taken down twice himself. That was a 19-yard gain. Here's Avery going in for a second touchdown. No, they mark him just out of bounds inside the one. Going for that flag, but apparently didn't make it. Great block by the fullback, number 47, coming across in motion. Takes care of the defender. Avery tries to stretch for the end zone. Surprised he didn't dive and hit the pylon. Would have been an easy touchdown. Aaron Brown did a good job just to get enough of him. He hit the outside of the pylon. Second best team scoring in the red zone. Two for three today. The only other time they didn't score, they fumbled it away. The first charge timeout of the first half. Here's a look at the Avery run. Going for the end zone. Really looks like his Ooh, foot inside. did hit the pylon, so it was a touchdown. He didn't even have to dive. Yeah, it looked like the outside first time uh, I saw the replay, but definitely on the inside. Hawaii has taken a timeout here, and that should have been a touchdown.
clearly has his foot. All you have to do is hit that pylon, and he does kick it with his left foot. So that should be a touchdown. The way, he, the way Boise State is motoring, I don't think they're concerned about not scoring with six inches left. <laughs> yeah. Six inches, not usually a problem for Chris Peterson's team. 21 straight victories for Boise State, the best active streak in the nation. And after the Hawaii timeout, here's a second and goal, just inches away from another score. Here comes Boise State straight from the huddle, from the sideline, straight to the line of scrimmage. Once again, using that pace to their advantage. Avery in the backfield. And now they are looking. Going to further review. They're going to go back and look at that last play. You have to wonder what took them so long. Yeah, I mean, I guess they got a chance to look at it. This is, a, this is an instance where Hawaii got hurt. Now they're going to burn a timeout. Yeah, if they would have just let them right. run a play, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have got to look at the, the replay. And this will be a touchdown as far as we can tell. Yep, Hawaii called the timeout subsequent to this last play that, was, uh, that did not get off the ground. And they are looking at it upstairs. Ken Lashido, the replay official, the communicator, Paul, Paul Schaffeld. Both of them stopped by the booth beforehand, and they are talking down to Robert Cameron, the referee, and what we expect to be the second touchdown of the day for Avery. Here's Jeremy Avery. He's second on the depth chart this year. Shifted around a little bit on the offense, played some wide receiver, moved him back. Offensive coordinator Brian Harson said he's been awesome as far as his attitude, handling the demotion said he understood that he would still get his touches, they would utilize him in other ways, and that's really a thing that you see with this Boise State team. It's very, everybody's very unselfish. I don't think they're worried at all about the stats. When you consider all the, the numbers that are going down, the record books, how many players are moving up the charts, none of them really care. After further review, the runner broke the plane of the goal line with the ball before he stepped out of bounds, touchdown. Officials nailed it. Good job by the replay officials and Jeremy Avery with his second touchdown run of the game, eight on the season. As Danny mentioned, he was second team all whack last year, over 1,100 yards, and uh, now in the backup role to Martin, but still getting a lot of touches and making the most of them. And they spread the ball around to so many different guys. Everybody gets their opportunities. Three and a half minutes to go 90 yards. Brotsman for the extra point. Up, oh, and they're gonna just take it in for two. That's Pettis, who was back to hold. They missed the two-point conversion earlier, failed on it, I should say, and that time Pettis was able to run it in. Just running an option, Austin Pettis handling the ball with the option to pitch it to the kicker. I think he made a good decision on keeping it on his own. 21-0, Boise State on top of Hawaii. Let's go to Dari. Well, how about that one loss team Boise State fans are so concerned about in their rearview mirror? That's Alabama trailing 3-0 to LSU until Greg McElroy finds Trent Richardson from a yard out. He fights his way in. Alabama leading in the second over LSU, 7-3. to three. How about Northwestern and Penn State? Joe Paterno getting for Persa a fourth career of room win. That goes but in Dan Persa, two rushing touchdowns, 84 yards on the ground, hoping that doesn't happen. 14's at Northwestern. Oh, thank you very much, Penn State. Another tough year. They're down 14 nothing to Northwestern. Joe Pot trying to get win number 400. LSU and Alabama playing right now, and Boise State fans very much hoping <laughs> that LSU can come from behind and win that game. That's the, the great debate among them. Should a one-loss Alabama team go to the national championship game ahead of a team like Boise State if they're unbeaten? Blunt, very dangerous kick returner. Takes it out of his end zone and is taken out of bounds around the 28-yard line. 
So Northwestern leading Penn State right now 14 nothing in a couple of weeks. They're going to be taking on Illinois at Wrigley Field. Yep, the home to the Cubs built back in 1914. The Bears played there for about 50 years. 104th meeting between Northwestern and Illinois. And we will have it for you two weeks from today, 3.30 Eastern time on ESPNU. Danny, Jess, and I will be there, and we're a little bit excited. To say the least. <laughs> that will be cool. So Hawaii's down three touchdowns. Bryant Moniz handing it off to Alex Green. Green gang tackled at the 33-yard line. Byron Hout, Chase Baker converging. Hawaii just three first downs with two three and outs in its first four possessions. Not what you would expect from an offense as prolific as this one. It's been a struggle here early for Hawaii, but the thing about their offense, they can score quick. So they could fight their way back in this game. And I'm sure defense coordinator Pete Kwiatkowski is very aware of that. He will not let up the pressure on this Hawaii offense. Seventh in the nation in total yards. First in passing yards. Moniz to the air. Completes it over the middle for the first down to Rodney Bradley. For more on the Hawaii, what's going on with Hawaii? Let's go down to Jess Mendoza. Well, Danny, you mentioned earlier about Hawaii needing that spark to be able to come from behind. And really, for Hawaii right now, that spark is not coming. I'm right behind their bench. I mean, they're so quiet. They're not communicating. They keep kind of hanging their heads. And they need that spark to be able to do it. And it's not going on the sideline right now. Thanks, Jess. Yeah, they, they really need somebody. I would expect it to come from from Moniz. The quarterback has got to be the de facto leader for this team, and hopefully with that completion, he can find some mojo. That one is caught, bobbled by Bradley, and then he was able to bring it in right at midfield. And Bradley with a little circus catch there. Didn't catch it on the first try. Moniz found him on the curl route. Watching Bob a little hair, but good job of concentration, securing the ball. And in this type of offense, like I mentioned it earlier, every completion is so important because they throw it so many times. They, and especially at this point in the game, they need to build that confidence little by little. Second and one, this is the first time Hawaii has been on Boise State side of the field all day. Moniz flares it out to Dustin Blunt, and Blunt picks up the first down. Slipped away from the would-be tackler to pick up five. Ryan Winterswijk made the stop for Boise. Very interesting that Hawaii has not found Greg Salas and Kealoa Polaris early. It's been most of the outside receivers, and in a run and shoot, typically the inside slot guys are the guys who get most of the catches, but Boise State's defense doing a good job of taking away the inside throws, forcing Hawaii to the perimeter. Salas with one catch. Pilaris has zero catches today. The two top threats. First down, Moniz runs out of trouble and wisely runs out of bounds at the 40-yard line. So Pilaris and Salas, the two-star receivers, both of them seniors, Salas second in the nation in both receptions and receiving yards per game. Has the one catch, Polaris, zero so far. And we talked about the tandem of receivers for Boise State and Pettis and Young. These two guys statistically can compare to anybody in the country. Second and seven. Back we now see Polaris out there. Not played it much at all today. Not been out there. And there's a, a tackle on green by Shea McClellan. Picked up only a yard. Talked about all the three and outs for Hawaii and struggling. Here's a look at the run play. And Boise State really noticed a key on Alex Green that he shuffled a little bit differently when he ran the football. And so far, they've been a, done a good job recognizing that shuffle step and shutting down the run. Polaris out again. There you see him on the sideline on a third and six. Did hurt his left hamstring against Idaho last week, hampered by that, and obviously not 
And that's a great tackle by Loka, keeping Blunt from getting the first down. Let's go back to the studio and Dari Noka. Well, Pam, Danny said he thought Oregon would score 70. They got a bit of a ways to go here. 3-3, though, they finally get the end zone. Well, Michael James from a yard out. They go for two, as they often do. It's the popular score of 11-3 in the second. Thanks, so a, a surprising struggle so far for Oregon. And they have dominated Washington lately. And on fourth and two, Hawaii has elected to go for it. Why not? Down by three scores. Moniz running for it and won't get there. Wrapped up, J.P. Nisby, a backup nose tackle, makes the stop. Boise gets the ball back. Moniz actually lost a couple of yards on that play. Chris Peterson, is that a smile over there? <laughs> His defense coming up big. His offense has gotten him 21 points. Dari Noke in studio coming up at the half. TCU and Utah, a big game in Salt Lake City, but it is one-sided right now. We'll update that as well as show you what Cam Newton did on the field, hoping to silence all the critics off of it. And Joe Paterno going for 400, but it's not so easy, guys. See you at the half. All right, Dari, thanks for being there with Matt. We got... Uh, a Boise blowout brewing here, 21-0. Kellen Moore, Chris Peterson's team. Oh, Kellen Moore, 21 of 24. That's an 88% completion there, uh, Danny. It's very impressive. <laughs> that's, uh, even if you're throwing against air, that's pretty good. He really looks on pace to break the passing efficiency record, which is held by Colt Brennan, the former, former Hawaii quarterback. First and 10, they stopped Hawaii as they went forward on fourth down. Moore, oh, that's intercepted. He does not throw interceptions, but that time he did. Mana Silva able to get the ball right back for Hawaii. Kellen Moore looking downfield, trying to find Shoemaker down the middle once again, but Mana Silva, the benefactor of the overthrow, a rare overthrow by Kellen Moore, able to come up with the interception. Mana Silva with his sixth interception on the season. And maybe that could be the spark that Hawaii is desperately seeking right now. He has eight tackles already. That's his 12th career interception, just one off the Hawaii record. So Moore has thrown three interceptions this year. That's as many as he threw all of last season. Second Boise turnover gives it to Hawaii. Here comes the corner blitz. Moniz escapes and then completes it. To Royce Pollard, a flag is down. Pollard picks up the first down, at least momentarily. Moniz going over. That's Nick Rolovich, the offensive coordinator that Moniz is having a chat with. Illegal touching, number 81 of the offense. He went out of bounds on his own, returned, and was the first to touch the pass. That's lost it down at the previous spot. Second down. Royce Pollard, number 81 for Hawaii. During the scramble drill, he goes out of bounds. And the only way you're allowed to go out of bounds and come back in is if you're forced out by a defender. He went out on his own. It almost looked like he got lost where he was in the field. Didn't mean to do it, but it doesn't matter because no one pushed him out. Went out on his own, was the first to touch the ball. You can't do that, so it's a loss of down, and you negate the 14-yard gain in the first down. Brings up a... Second and ten. Hawaii trying to get something on the board before the half. Throw to one of the inside receivers. That's Blunt. And he is taken down right at the line of scrimmage by Chase Baker. And Hawaii comes out looking a little bit flat, and it's hard to blame them. It's 9.30 a.m. kickoff time, Hawaii time. And you look at the task they have this season, not only playing tough teams, but traveling 35,000 miles playing five bowl teams this year. And that is, that's incredible to me. They travel more than any NFL team or any other team across the country. Hopping across the Pacific Ocean will do that for you. And I know how I was in college. I definitely was not awake at 9.30 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> One for six on third down. Boise is six for six. Huge difference. Third and 10. Completion. 
but not nearly enough. Bradley is tackled as soon as he caught the ball. And Boise, that's one problem they had last week against Louisiana Tech, not tackling. They're done, they've done a good job of it today. Much better job that time and really forcing Bryant Moniz into taking the underneath route. Bryant Moniz knew he needed to pick up 10 yards for the first down but just couldn't do it. Boise State would not let him throw the deep ball, forced him into the underneath throw. Alex Janaki in the punt yet again. Terrific punter from Australia. Good job to keep it away from Potter, and that takes a nice Hawaii roll inside the 10, rolling out around the eight yard line. 49 yard punt. Janaki's had to punt five times already in this game. 2.48 left to go, two timeouts. They're on the eight, plenty of time to go 92 uh, yards. Especially when you look at what they've done this game. I mean, they're just running the no huddle anyway, so it's like a two minute drill and nobody runs it better than Kellen Moore. Everybody, of course, remembers the opening weekend against Virginia Tech, got the ball with a minute 47 and just such precision down the field, really could give a coaching clinic off of how he ran the two minute drill in that game. Completions to Gabe Linehan, Mitch Burrows, Austin Pettis, ultimately for the touchdown as they were able to come from behind to, to beat Virginia Tech in Landover, Maryland. Jeremy Avery, who has two touchdown runs, taken down. Vaughn Maytonga makes the stop. There, there's Vaughn Maytonga from Kauai, my favorite island. <laughs> Interesting here that Boise State is actually huddling, huddling on this drive, going a little bit slower than they've been going the entire first half. Brings up second and 10. Moore looks one way, throws against the grain to Avery out of the backfield. Good blocking in front, and Avery breaks free. Huge first down, catch and run. Richard Torres runs him down, but he picks up 26, and the no huddle returns. Back to the frenetic pace. They've had so much success with so far in this game, and really, Jeremy Avery almost broke it for a long touchdown. Doug Martin back in the backfield. Fake to him. Moore, wide open. No good, that was young, it was open momentarily. The ball floated a little bit. Clock stops with a minute 52 left to go in the half. Moore at one point completed 19 straight passes. Cooled off a little, 22 of 27 with a very rare interception to balance out the touchdown. 290 yards and a half. Pretty, Pretty impressive. Yep. At 298 yards all game in their last game against Louisiana Tech a week ago Tuesday. Moore to Young, and he goes down as soon as he caught the ball, actually lost some yardage. You know, you look at the pace that Boise State, they've kind of slowed it down almost from what they've been doing. And I'm wondering if it's more of they didn't want to give Hawaii a chance to get the ball back. I don't understand why they didn't keep on the pressure and that's the only thing I can think of because of Hawaii's potential to put points on the board before the half. Strange, but strange decision because Hawaii hasn't done anything offensively. Right. And it, they've been clicking. And, and if they don't convert here, they still will get the ball back with plenty of time. Clock ticking. Moore over the middle and another catch by Tyler Shoemaker. Shoemaker grabs it in traffic. Takes it all the way down to the 43 of Hawaii. Kellen Moore has such great protection most of the time, but watch him when he gets pressure in his face, stand and deliver a bullet. Takes a big shot, but still delivers a strike. 26 yard gain, Pettis this time makes the catch. Shoemaker 117 yards receiving already in this half. Had a career-high 124 yards last game, and this is two games in a row in which Shoemaker has broken the century mark in receiving yards in the first half. And you look at Kellen Moore in the Heisman race, I think most people have him pegged for third behind Cal, uh, Cam Newton and the Michael James, but really, he could vault some people with the types of numbers he's putting up this afternoon. Could he even make a believer out of you? That's the question. We're gonna get more into that in the second half. Moore, completion. 
He fought the tight end. That was a good tackle out there in space by Lemetrius Davis. Held him to a four yard gain. So they're looking at a third and one. Clock continues to run. They have two timeouts left. Uh, wasted about six seconds trying to get a personnel group in on the field. Kellen Moore very frustrated. And Boise now with one timeout remaining. Boise State com coming into this football game unbeaten. 7-0 overall, and this is who they have left at Idaho. All the games on the ESPN family of networks. Toughest test looks to be at Nevada, Colin Kaepernick and company on November 26th. And here's the problem. I believe with Kellen Moore in the eyes of the Heisman voters, when he's playing against Utah State, Cam Newton is going to be playing in the Iron Bowl against Alabama. And if he has a great game, that's going to go much further with Heisman voters than a performance against Utah State. So he, it almost, Kellen Moore is, he falls to the same perception that people have of Boise State. And it hurts him. That's some, the him. perception that some people exactly. have of Boise some State. Exactly, some people, true. Including one in this booth. Third and one with 34 seconds left to go. Is, in Lee, half. is Lee Corso in here? No, well, no. I think people <laughs> might be able to guess. Toss to Martin, trying to get around the edge. Boy, that's a really good defensive play. Richard Torres, boy, just strung it out, stuck with him, and was able to knock him out of bounds. And they lose five yards on a third and one. That's the first time they've not converted on a third down today. They were seven for their first seven. And they failed on that play, in part because Torres, a former walk-on, one of six walk-ons who are getting significant time for Hawaii, made the stop. Here we go. Here's Boise State football, fourth and six, four receivers in. And they're going for it. Moore on the roll, looking downfield, and that was a flat-out overthrow. Tyler Shoemaker was wide open near the 20. That would have been an easy first down, but Moore overthrew him. Kellen Moore sliding to his right, avoiding the pass rush. And this is one thing that he does very well is throw on the run. But this time, once again, Eric uncharacteristically overthrowing a wide open Tyler Shoemaker. 19 straight completions earlier, but he's cooled off a little bit. Thrown against his body on that, but usually a lot more accurate. He is number one in the nation in pass efficiency. And that's one of his strengths, too, yeah. is, mo is throwing on the run. Boise State with the option to get the second half kick. Hawaii got it to open the game and see if they can score, keeping it on the ground. However, with Alex Green, who was stopped by Winston Venable. Venable, one of the stars on this defense. Jessica Mendoza getting ready to grab Chris Peterson. We'll have a chat with him before he heads into the dressing room. Boise with 369, 369 yards in the first half. More 322 yards through the air, a touchdown and an interception. Shoemaker over 100 yards receiving. Avery with a couple of touchdown runs. They take a 21-0 lead in the half. Here's Jess. Well, Coach, why would you go with the no huddle, faster pace early on and then kind of went away from that later in the half? No, we mix it in and out. That's We're not a no huddle team all the way, and, and uh, we're just going to see what works for us. When you have a shutout Hawaii in the first half, how do you continue that on D in the second well, half? we got to continue Ladies to get pressure gentlemen. on the passer. Our defense done a good job the third slowing these guys down. Out. They're very explosive, and they're never out of it. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. All right, Jess, this is a Hawaii team that averages 39 points per game. They came up with absolutely nothing in the first half. Boise leading Hawaii 21-0 at the break. Time for the ESPNU Halftime Report with Dari Noka. Welcome back to the All-State Game of the Week. Second half about to get underway here in Boise. The Broncos, number four in the nation, leading Hawaii by the score of 21 to nothing. In a game that they have dominated both offensively and defensively. Pam Ward along with Danny Cannell. Jessica Mendoza joins us this week as well. The Boise offense clicking. The defense looks good. Hawaii's in trouble. It's been all Boise State. Hawaii really has to figure a way how to slow down Kellen Moore and this no huddle offense. The frenetic pace just caught Hawaii off guard. And the flip side, Hawaii's offense has got to try 
to answer, put some points on the board very uncharacteristically. Their numbers early on, infinitesimal compared to what they've been doing. Infinitesimal means little. That means these, <laughs> as you look at our AutoZone first half stats, only 86 yards of offense for Hawaii. Usually the number one team passing in the nation. That's what sticks out to me. Uh, Bryant Moniz averaging almost 400 yards, only thrown for 74 early on in this game. But it is. Even Coach Peterson mentioned it before the half, said, hey, we've got to be keep the pressure on because they can score, they can fight their way back in this game. Boise gets the ball first. Scott Enos with the high kickoff. Goes out of bounds. Take a look at our first half highlights, Danny. All Boise State started off Austin Pettis breaking the career record for receptions. Then on the double handoff out of the Wildcat formation, Jeremy Avery takes it in. Boise State's rolling. Then Tyler Shoemaker off balance throw from Kellen Moore. And Jeremy Avery finds the corner of the end zone with his foot. Sneaks in for a touchdown. The officials reviewed that second touchdown and they came by the booth at halftime and said they were looking to see if the ball broke the plane while his uh, in tandem with the foot going inside and that's what they looked at and decided it was indeed a touchdown upon further review. First play of the second half on offense. Doug Martin picks up seven. Let's go down to Jess Mendoza. Jess. Well, I caught up with Hawaii coach McMacken and he said, hey, Boise State is as advertised. Our defense has been out there for 55 plays. He's like, we need to get them more rest. Plus, he's seeing a lot more man-to-man -man than he expected from both sides of the field. He said, you know what? I'm happy it's 21. They're usually beating teams by a lot more than this. Their biggest goal the second half, half put more pressure on the quarterback. Kellen Moore has way too much time. He certainly does, and he took advantage of that at one time with 19 straight completions, Martin runs for an easy first down, picks up 11 more yards. Ball once again in Hawaii territory. Good block by number 66, Thomas Bird up front and early. Boise State keeping it on the ground, back-to-back -back runs by Doug Martin. And when you give them field position, starting at the 40-yard line with a kick out of bounds, man, it's already tough to stop them, let alone when they start at the 40. Keeping it on the ground again to Martin. Bottled up by Elliot Purcell, but he still picks up five yards. It's one thing to demoralize a team through the air with all the passing that they did in the first half, but man, to come out and pound the ball now on the ground. And look at Kellen Moore, first half alone. I could, I could, I could name a lot of quarterbacks <laughs> across the country who would be happy with that on an entire game. Did throw an interception, which is very rare for Kellen, just his third of the season. As many as he had all last year. With the 39 touchdown passes, mm -hmm. which was an obscene ratio. Second and five, right back to Martin. Martin stopped about a yard or so short of the first down. Four runs in a row for Boise State to open the half, creating another third and short yardage situation. Also huddling on offense. You surprised yep. by this, Danny? Well, what Coach Peterson said coming at halftime when he talked to Jessica was, hey, we work different paces, and that's to keep the defense off guard. So not surprised that they slow down a little bit. Third and two. Martin still the tailback. Dan Paul the fullback. Yeah, yet again, and that's a big hole. Or penalty comes down. Might have a holding against Boise, but Martin took the ball inside the 20-yard line. Number 73, offense, 10 yard penalty, third down. Nate Potter, a junior, a junior, excuse me, from right here in Boise, was a first team all whack performer last year, and that erases the first down run by Martin. And that's very uncharacteristic of a Boise State offense, too. So well coached, so clean on offense, very rarely penalized. So instead of a first and 10 at the 20, the penalty. Brings it back to the 43, where it's a third and 11. Anticipate, especially with the empty backfield, Moore putting it up into the air for the first time on this drive. Now joined by Martin back there, who's kept in to block. Moore over the middle, wide open. Austin Pettis breaks the tackle and goes in for the touchdown. On third and 11, Moore strikes again. 
The middle of the field has been wide open all day. Tyler Shoemaker finding it early on. This time they work Austin Pettis from the outside, but they get him to the middle of the field running wide open. That's one of those things about Kellen Moore. He does find a lot of wide open receivers and nobody hits him in stride better than number 11. Bratzman in to add the extra point to make it 28-0. So with that catch, Austin Pettis joins Tyler Shoemaker, both of them over 100 yards receiving on the afternoon. Kellen Moore getting used to this. Celebrating another touchdown, his second touchdown throw of the game. Welcome back, Kellen Moore and company. With the lead, the telecast available in 3D on ESPN 3D, brought to you by Sony. Fans here at a Bud Light viewing party in Meridian, Idaho, about 15 miles from Boise. ESPN 3D televising 13 college football games in 3D, including this year game between Boise State and Hawaii. And uh, Danny Cannell is rocking the 3D glasses. They even hooked me up to match my tie. They had the red glasses with a tie, but I'll tell you what, it is pretty impressive, the 3D. I mean, you talk about an offense running a high-powered attack. When you see it in 3D, I mean, I was reaching out trying to catch balls when I was watching. It was pretty cool. Even, even more terrifying, there's a look at one of the 3D cameras. Now, are you ruining your eyes by looking at that, by looking through those No, now? it's just it's like a, I'm wearing cool sunglasses. That's why I might swipe oh. these. They're on me to give them back, but I might keep these babies. <laughs> you just gave away your thievery. <laughs> Our friends here from ESPN 3D, including Ray Bentley down on the sideline as a sideline analyst, my former sidekick. And our buddies in the 3D booth informed us that Kellen Moore was only four passes away from the NCAA record for consecutive passes in a row. At 19, but that was snapped. Dustin Blunt gets the kickoff, keeps his leg churning up to about the 33-yard line. That's a 30-yard return for Dustin, who averages over 25 yards per return. I, I don't know what's been more impressive because the offense obviously gets so much of the attention, but the defense shutting down this high-powered Hawaii attack has been equally impressive. Again, the only team in the nation in the bowl subdivision that has a defense and an offense in the top five in total offense and total defense, that's Boise State. That's a national championship contender, contender Danny. Here comes the blitz, Muniz is in big trouble, and he goes down. Winston Venable, untouched, coming in from his buck linebacker position, gets the sack. Winston Venable's been coming off the edge almost the entire game. Here he comes, straight to the backfield. Brian Moniz looking to his left, never sees him, never feels the pressure. Actually does a pretty good job of holding on to the football, making sure he doesn't fumble. But Winston Venable, the playmaker for this Boise State defense. That is the third time Mon Moniz has been sacked this afternoon. Second and 19. Only a three-man rush this time, and Moniz has trouble finding someone. Throws it into double coverage, and it's almost intercepted. Off the hands of Deron Johnson. We've well, seen defensive coordinator Pete Kwiatkowski mix things up. You saw Winston Venable, the play before, they brought a blitz, bought five blitzers. That time, they only rushed three, dropped eight in the coverage. That's why Brian Moniz is not able to find anybody open. And of course, Jerron Johnson with the great breakup at the end of the play. Third and 19, a sold out Bronco Stadium. Getting louder. Moniz wants a timeout. We will take a timeout with him. Let's get an update back in the studio from Dari Noka. Dari. Uh, they, they, what is, I, tell, I know Boise fans don't want to hear this panel, Danny, but TCU looks unbelievable. Ed Wesley touchdown after an interception and a long return. 30 zip at Utah. That's not what the folks here, you're not making them any happier with that news. <laughs> TCU jumped Boise in the BCS standings this week. Boise going from third to fourth, TCU from 
fourth to third, and, and they are looking terrific today. Well, you talk about weak schedules, and Utah hasn't played anyone yet, and they're getting exposed against TCU, and TCU is quite a team, but don't forget this team did beat TCU last year. But of course, we don't look back, we stay with this season. Beating them in the bowl game last year, 17 to 10 in the Fiesta Bowl, the second time that they have won the Fiesta Bowl over the last three seasons. After the Hawaii timeout, here's your third and 19. Boise again showing blitz. And they're coming with it. Moniz hit as he throws, but completes it for the first down. Royce Pollard all the way up to the 46-yard line, and that was a good job by Moniz handling the pressure. Moniz brings that added dimension of being able to avoid the rush. Great job stepping up, feeling the pressure, getting rid of the football, and finding a defender downfield on a third down and long situation, throwing it right over the outstretched arms of Winston Venable, number 17. Pollard turning 21 today. Gets the first down on a third and long with 21 yards. Moniz hit from behind, sack for the fourth time today. This time, it's Shea McClellan, his second sack. Shea McClellan coming from the bottom of your screen with the pressure from the end position before they got to Moniz with the blitz. This time they just did it with four down linemen. Defensive end, Shea McClellan just beating the left tackle off the ball. Moniz had no chance to get rid of it. Just a sophomore, the Boise State coach is very excited about McClellan's future and present as the starting defensive end. Second and 16 after the sack. More pressure coming, they pick it up. Moniz able to complete it to Rodney Bradley. Jamar Taylor making the stop, and Hawaii further hurt. Kealoha Polaris, who was only on that we saw for one play in the first half. Polaris, a very talented receiver, will not play anymore in this game. Once again, here's Venable coming from the outside. They had him actually lined up over the wide receiver and blitz. Moniz throws it to the vacated spot where Venable came from so many times. That's the spot you can expose in a defense where the blitz came from. Third and 12. Over the middle and then to the sideline. That's Rodney Bradley. The question is, was he in bounds when he caught it? Boise says no, Greg McMacken says yes. And remember, this conference is important because if they review it, it'll be the call on the field. So this is very important, McMacken getting in on it. And they incomplete. say it is incomplete. Here's a look, Moniz, watch the pressure coming once again from McClellan on the left, steps into the throw, and ah, the ball's incomplete, comes out. Well, you see Bradley got the one foot down, then the ball I think he had plenty of, I think he had both Bobble. feet in bounds, but the question was, did he secure the football? And I don't think he did. McMacken, Coach McMacken believes otherwise though. And they're gonna challenge the call and get a look at this. Coach McMacken making his case for a completion. You see here, he has plenty of room inbounds, gets the ball in his hands, but right there, does he have enough possession, Pam? Yeah, that's the that's question. The, that's the question mark. When you, I don't think he did, and that's why I think the officials, when it's running full time, when you run in slow motion, it does look like he's got it for two seconds, but you gotta remember in real time, I mean, that's a split second that he's holding the football, and it comes out almost immediately. So the official on the field said it was not a challengeable play and they've lost a timeout. 
I'm a little confused by that, Pam. I mean, uh -huh. I don't see why we couldn't look at that. It wasn't like the ball, there was a turnover situation where, I mean, there was no whistle blown. The ball went out of bounds. Why couldn't they see if that was a completion or not? So it's fourth and 12. Alex Dunacki in to punt yet again. 6'6", 220, a really tall punter. And one of the best going. That's a kick towards Chris Potter, who hangs onto it and goes down immediately. Potter did not call the fair catch, and Kenny Estes tackled him. So Boise State with a four-touchdown lead gets the ball back when we come back. And we're going to talk about Danny's Heisman hopefuls, some obvious choices in his top five, and maybe a couple not so obvious. Welcome back to Boise, Idaho. Kellen Moore and the Broncos impressively leading Hawaii 28 to nothing. Danny's Heisman hopefuls. Cam Newton is the front runner by far. Just so much charisma that he brings to the game. The Michael James, one of the most exciting players in the country. Of course, Kellen Moore, what he's accomplished this season. Spectacular efficiency. And then my swing players, these are the bottom two. Andrew Luck has an outstanding chance tonight against Arizona to make a strong case in front of a national TV audience. And Ricky Stanzi today threw a late touchdown pass against Indiana to lead Iowa to victory. But really, it's a three-man race in my mind. I mean, the bottom two are fun to kind of rotate. But you look at Cam Newton, Michael James, and Kellen Moore. Those are the, the ones everyone's watching. Kellen Moore, number three on Danny's list. The quarterback. Takes a shot, has a man wide open downfield, hits Titus Young in stride for the Bronco touchdown. 83 yards. Nobody throws a better deep ball than Kellen Moore. And when you protect him and give him time to throw, he will dissect any defense in the country. Moore with 448 passing yards, three touchdowns. Rotsman's extra point makes it 35-0. Boise State. Here's a look at Titus Young on the outside, just runs a little route. It's almost like he finds himself behind the defense, puts his hand up and keeps going. But really the play action pass with the safeties biting up on the, the run fake really was what allowed Titus Young to get behind the defense. And there is no better feeling as a quarterback than just watching a wide receiver run wide open down the field for a touchdown of that length. 21st touchdown pass of the season for Moore. And with that catch, Young has 99 yards receiving, so they're on the cusp of having three receivers, Pettis, Young, and Shoemaker, with 100-yard games this afternoon. And here, we were just talking about the Heisman race and just another thing about perception and reality and what goes into the votes. When you look at Cam Newton's signature plays, he's got guys hanging on him. He's got to break tackles. And then you look at Kellen Moore's pass right there, and it looks easy. He's got receivers running wide open. Now, granted, he does an amazing job, delivers balls right in stride, very accurate. Celebrating its six years sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities, general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point. To date, Allstate has contributed more than $2.2 million in scholarship money. More money today. Lots of points from Boise. Blunt gets another kickoff. Short one taken at the 15. And he is taken down. Ball loose. Nope, it's, Boise said they had it, but the officials say it stays with Hawaii. Let's go to Dari for an update. All right, let's update Washington and Oregon, shall we? Now, the Huskies, for some reason, still in this game, and here's the reason why Keith Price to DeAndre Goodwin, that made it a five-point game, but just seconds later, Darren Thomas to Jeff Mayo. Oregon back up a dozen early in the third. How about that response, Jeff Mayo? All right, darn, not a lot of people thought it 
can even be that close. What does it tell you about Jake Locker? That's a little curious that Washington's able to put up points without him. Oh. Oh, down again. Fifth sack. This time it's Tyrone Crawford from Windsor, Ontario, the Canadian getting in on the sack party. And this is Hawaii's nightmare right here, not able to pass protect Bryant Moniz, creating these long yarded situations. It just couldn't get much worse right now for Hawaii, offensively and defensively. Crawford with the sack was a junior college All-American, his first year at Boise State, getting his sack. Brings up a second and 18 for Hawaii. Pass is complete for a short game to Royce Pollard. Picked up about three yards. Moniz and company certainly not used to being shut down like this. The most prolific passing offense in the country. Greg Salas, his star receiver, 81 catches on the season coming in, has one today. And Polaris again, unable to play, just played one play. Polaris is out because of a hurt hamstring. Hawaii doesn't even have 100 yards of offense, Danny. Astonishing. Third and 15. And another sack. Everybody's getting in on it. This time it's Jarrell Root. A junior from right here in Boise. And they're getting the pressure with four men blitzing, seven in coverage. Brian Moniz, no time to look down the field. Here's a look at the pocket or lack thereof for Brian Moniz. Pressure coming from the right side. Nowhere to step up into, and Brian Moniz goes down. Frustrating for a quarterback. Nowhere to get rid of the football. Dunaki with another punt. Fair catch by Potter at the 25-yard line. So six <laughs> sacks for the Boise defense. Four of them come in this half. They're up 35 nothing. Back to Boise, where number four Boise State is totally manhandling Hawaii, outplaying them in every phase of the game, 35 to nothing. Kellen Moore is having another spectacular game. That's Chris Peterson, the head coach. There's Kellen. In fact, this is the best day of his career. 448 yards passing, already a career high, and we have half of the third quarter yet to go. Danny, are you impressed? I am very impressed. Not uh, easy nobody's man to as, I mean, the efficiency is what I'm impressed. You know, the 19 passes in a row early, taking his shots down the field, not turning it over. The complete package when you look at him. Has an 83 yard touchdown pass, which is the longest play for Boise this season. Last time he threw it, they're going high and long again. And that ball is still caught. Rondo Hewat, even though he was covered by Lemetrius Davis, was able to gather it in for 48 more yards. Another play action pass. You see Hewat just running a post straight down the field, never stops running. Number two, Lemetrius Davis is there, just can't come up with it. That's just great effort by Hewat getting the football. 496 yards passing now for more. Chris Potter, who comes in and runs the Wildcat form, holds on to it. Paredes makes the stop, picked up 10. This is what I mean, Kellen Moore's done, and really, and that's a great graphic because it shows you the way he distributes the uh, football. You talk about distribution and, and working different players on the field. He spreads it around to different receivers. We've seen Shoemaker step up. We just saw Hewat step up, Pettis, Young, everyone across the board. He spreads it around. Another formation, Avery now out of the Wildcat. Holds on to it. The running back who has two rushing touchdowns today. Doesn't pick up anything. Let's go back to Darinoka for an update. Watching Auburn, uh, rather Alabama and LSU. L LSU down 7-3. Jordan Jefferson hadn't thrown a touchdown pass since opening night against North Carolina, but he finds Reuben Randall. And LSU leaves that Alabama team. That should make Boise fans happy. Oh, yes, Dari, something to make the folks happy who are very sullen and we're not happy when they heard the TCU was blowing out Utah. 
Knocking on the door yet again. Here's Doug Martin. His turn to carry the ball. See Doug Martin working the running game, getting more involved. Receivers have all had their touches. Doug Martin's gotten his as well. I like the change of pace. Now they're huddling, done some no huddle. Really, Hawaii's been on their heels all afternoon. Now inside of five minutes. Moore into the end zone and it's intercepted. Two intercept interceptions for Moore today. That's Zach Mash who came up with the football and, and you, Kellen looked a little frustrated like the the pattern was broken off. Well, so many times he throws the spots. Yep. And watch him here. He's going to take that shot that he threw earlier to Shoemaker back of the end zone. Problem is there's a Hawaii defender waiting for it. Mana Silva, second interception on the day. And watch Kellen Moore's frustration at the end. Maybe a hair greedy there, I think, though, as far as taking that shot. Trying to anticipate a throw, and Mana Silva comes up with a turnover for Hawaii who continues to get turnovers even though they're not having much success. Second pick for Silva. Coming out throwing Bradley gathers in the Moniz pass. So Boise number four in the BCS standings but way down in budgets. You know, I was gonna say with the Alabama score, I was gonna say, why don't they put it up on the big scoreboard here? But you can see, I mean, this just is not the same type of situation that you've got at some of the bigger conferences. I mean, look at that. They're not even a third of Oregon, not even a sixth of Auburn. It's pretty phenomenal what they've been able to do on such a limited budget. Keeping up with the big boys. They just want the opportunity to play with the big boys for the national championship. Pollard with the catch. Let's go back to Dari. All right, continuing to update what's going on around the country. Nebraska and Iowa State. This was a 10-10 game until the Cyclones. Austin Arnaud throws a pick to Nebraska's Austin Cassidy. It's an Austin kind of play, and it goes the Huskers' way. They lead 17-10 in the third. Thank you, Dari. Nebraska and Iowa State. Nebraska's doing well since they lost to the Cyclones, who are trying to become bowl eligible. Of course, had that big win against Texas a couple of weeks ago. Second and three. Movement. Austin Hansen on the left side got out of his stance early. Five-yard penalty. Second down. It's been one of those days for Hawaii. Can't get anything right. Bryant Moniz coming into this game, first in the nation in passing yards and total offense per game, but has really struggled against this Boise State defense. Hundred and twenty-seven yards passing for Moniz, 17 of 26. Trying to get away, lost the ball momentarily, picked it up, but he's sacked yet again. Seventh time Moniz has been sacked. Well, we asked Pete Kwiatkowski, how do you stop this run and shoot? He said you pressure the quarterback. Pocket collapses for Bryant Moniz. Nowhere to go once again. He's harassed. Winner swike in there. Jonathan Brown. Some of the backups getting in there for Boise. Brings up a third and 13. Four-man rush. Moniz with the completion, but well short of the first down. Royce Pollard. Now they're saying it's incomplete as the officials converge again. Log on to Facebook.com slash ESPNU today. Become a fan. Let us know your thought on today's question. And that is, if the season ended today, what do you think the BCS Bowl matchups would be? The big one would be the national championship game. 
Oregon in the driver's seat, along with Auburn, top two teams in the BCS standings. I, I really feel like Auburn and Oregon are going to end up playing each other. I know everybody talks about Alabama being the one lost team. You see them struggling against LSU. They're losing right now to LSU. Alabama is, but I think Alabama Auburn's going to end up oh, running okay. the table. I, everybody talks about Alabama, but I believe Auburn's the second best team in the country. Finaki's punt. Goes out of bounds. Let's have an, up, an update. Penn State and Northwestern. Dari, what do you have? Well, you know, I'm glad you guys are keeping me busy because I'm enjoying this. Penn State was down 21 nothing. now down 21-7. Matt McGloin in a quarterback fights Nate Cadogan, and it's a one-touchdown yeah, game. Touchdown. Joe Bog going for 400. Could it be number 400? There are... Uh, Still plenty of time left in that game, right? Just nine minutes to go in the third quarter. And Joe Paterno has been there since 1966 when Lyndon Johnson was in his one and only term. Average home price. Star Trek aired for the first time. <laughs> Sound of Music was best picture. Julie Andrews on the right, Joe Pond on the left. 1966. One little stat Ooh. I saw that really impressed me was Coach Paterno's 399 wins are more than all the other Big Ten coaches combined. That just kind of puts it in perspective how impressive that 399 wins are. And going up against Pat Fitzgerald, who's a, who's a baby. I don't think I, I don't even know if Coach Fitzgerald was born in 1966. He, he couldn't have been. No, nope. uh, no, I don't think not he even was. close. Wow. Kellen Moore has thrown two interceptions today. He has Jeremy Avery to hand off to, and Avery is still going. Finally taken down at the 45 of Hawaii by Corey Paredes. 35 yards for Avery. Well, one thing you talk about when you talk about Boise and people question their competition, well, if they did have to play an SEC schedule or an ACC or a Pac-10, they would have the depth to compete because they can shuttle guys in and out. I mean, there is no drop-off between Doug Martin, Jeremy Avery, the wide receiver position. They've got some depth. And that usually is one of the big differences, is depth. Avery takes a break, Martin gets the handoff, and with that long run by Avery, Boise State is now over 600 yards today in offense. Six bills. A team that averages 516 yards of offense, which is fifth in the nation. And uh, we still have more than a quarter left to go. They're over 600 yards. Breaking free and running for the first down. Join ESPN in support of our troops, wounded warriors, and their families. You can donate $10 by texting USO to 27722 or go to www.uso.org. Veterans Day coming up next week. At halftime here, we saw quite a few young men and women taking the oath, swearing themselves into the service right here at Boise. He want with another catch, and the Dutchman flies for the first down. There are three Dutch guys on this football team for Boise. Really a unique situation, too, when you think about the distance they have to travel. One of the things that's interesting, I did some NFL Europe a few years ago, and the football played over in Europe, in Amsterdam, in Holland, it's, it's pretty impressive. They have quite a program for the youth over there. They play high school football, and Boise State's tapped into the talent over there. Over 500 yards passing now for Kellen Moore, 507. Third best game in the history of Boise State for any quarterback. Avery with another carry. Avery picking up six, and that ends the third quarter. Boise led 21-0 at the half, added a couple more touchdowns, a lot more sacks. Kellen Moore and company well in control of 35-0. Boise State leads Hawaii 35-0. Fourth quarter about to get underway. Let's go down to the field in Jess Mendoza. Thanks, Pam. The Make-A-Wish Foundation, along with head coach of Boise State, Coach Peterson and the Broncos, flew out 12-year-old Stephen Kinsey. He's from San Antonio, Texas, and he's suffering from non-Hodgkin's
Washington lymphoma. He came out here is now doing being a pseudo head coach. So he's helping the team. He even had a small little sledgehammer as he's been representing the Broncos. You'd think he'd be a Texas fan? Not so much. He loves the Bronco Blue. The great story, Stephen Kinsey coming out with Shea McClellan, who was bringing out the sledgehammer and the young man. His dad is in front of him blocking his, his, his son right now from view, but he's got the headphones on. I like on. Steven. He's and working you know the what? communication line. Steven's doing a good job. He it's 35 nothing. They need to think about keeping him on the staff. Terrific foundation, the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Avery right to the end zone yet again. Three rushing touchdowns for Jeremy Avery. Boise State with a balanced attack, able to do it through the air. Kellen Moore having a career day. Jeremy Avery with his third touchdown on the day. Really having their way with Hawaii all afternoon. Two minutes and 25 seconds to go 70 yards. Kyle Brotsman's extra point makes it 42 nothing. Jeremy Avery with touchdown runs of 14-4 and now 19 yards. Let's go back to Dari Noka for an update. All right, Pam, back to Penn State. Here they come in the quest for Joe Paterno's 400th win. They were down 21 nothing, and now, thanks to Matt McGloin connecting with Derek Moy, it's a 21-21 game. Still four minutes and change to play in the third. Terrific comeback by the Nittany Lions, trying to get Joe Paul win number 400. Here's our Discover game summary, heavily weighted in favor of Boise State. A career day for Kellen Moore, three more touchdown passes. Avery creeping up on 100 yards. Pettis well over 100 yards and receiving the same for Tyler Shoemaker for Boise State. Not just the offense, but the defense yeah. has been really, really impressive. Those, those zeros across the top of the board for Hawaii really jump out at me, especially when you consider Hawaii's offense and their prolific attack that puts up so much numbers, you would expect them at least to put up a couple scores. And here they are holding them scoreless. Armin's kickoff. Dustin Blunt. Very good kick returner for Hawaii, averaging over 25 yards per return on the season. Taken out at the 34-yard line, and they have a tee dog here, comes out and retrieves the kicking tee. That's Z, Z the tee dog. Oh, Jess has more on the mud. Go ahead, Jess. Hey, guys. I funny story with the, these tea dogs there's three of them and one of them actually got cut earlier in the game because it was too loud and he got distracted by the crowd they have to get to the tea and back in 25 seconds if they don't the next dog steps right in wow next dog in nice that's pretty stiff competition they better be ready that dog whoever that dog <laughs> was right there that was a lot faster that's right but they even have depth the dog here for, at Boise <laughs> they State. do, they do. <laughs> My dog would be distracted by the hot dogs. <laughs> Alex Green with the carry. We have depth with uh, with more Dari Noka updates. Dari. <laughs> well, you know what? I can't beat a tea retrieving dog, but I'm going to try. Alabama down 10-7 in LSU. Mark Ingram. Touchdown tied. It has not been an offensive output here, but it's 14-10 Alabama. Kansas scored 35 straight fourth quarter points to come from behind and beat Colorado 52-45. Wow. Oh, what a game that was in the Big 12. Colorado, one of the teams that beat Hawaii earlier this season. Another run for Alex Green. Hawaii with two losses coming in. They lost on opening day to Southern Cal, 49-36. And then a couple of weeks later, they lost big, 31-13 to Colorado. Yeah, really surprised with the performance so far by Hawaii in this game. Really, they had high expectations coming in here, thinking they had a chance to come in here and compete with Boise. And you look at what they've accomplished, six wins in a row. And of course, the most impressive one was the win against Nevada, holding Colin Kaepernick in that high-powered high offense to only 293 total yards. That was only the eighth first down of the game for Hawaii. They only have 121 yards of offense. Stays that way with the incompletion. Pollard was the 
intended receiver. Good coverage by Taylor over there. And that, that's the thing that's so impressive. When Brian Moniz does have time, the coverage is there. He doesn't have anywhere to go with the football, so very frustrating in that situation. Moniz coming in, leading the nation, not just in passing yards, but total yards per game, seven, six, 373 and a half. 373 and a half yards per game. In this game, he has 83. That's it. Of course, he's been sacked a lot, and that takes it back, and his, the passing game has been non-existent. Second down, handoff, Green right up the gut. And he is going all the way into the end zone. Hawaii finally scores, and they do it on the long touchdown run by Alex Green. 54 yards for the score. Caught Boise State off guard, expecting the pass. They mixed in the draw. Great blocking up front, kicking out. When you've got a team coming after the quarterback, that's the one play that can kind of keep them at bay is the draw play, and they were able to gas them there for the long run by Alex Green. Scott Enos for the extra point. 54-yard touchdown run. Before that, Hawaii, 16 rushes for minus six yards. 54-1 run by Alex Green. Hawaii not getting shut out. Welcome back to Boise. It is now 42-7. Boise State in charge, leading Hawaii here in the fourth quarter. Pam Ward and Danny Cannell, we are joined now by Pat Forty, one of the, uh, the great columnists for ESPN.com. And I would imagine you're pretty impressed by what you're seeing this afternoon. I am, you know, I guess I've been kind of the Boise bus driver yeah. per se, and uh, you know, I think they've they've shown up. Uh, you know, Hawaii, very explosive offense, and they've shut them out for three quarters, gave up the big run there, and Kellen Moore, man, oh man, has he been on fire. Best day of his career so far. And Pat, you gotta convince my partner, Danny Cannell here. He knows. He's yeah. a fellow expert with me. Now, come on. Yeah, we've, had some, we've had <laughs> some lively debates on ESPN I'm sure, but we, we, gotta, we gotta get him over to the right side. He's on the dark side of this argument. <laughs> See, I figured him being here would be enough to, to, to bring him over. I'll tell you was, what, I am impressed. I am very impressed with what Kellen Moore has done, this offense, the, the distribution. You talked about earlier, Pam, the, the number of weapons they have. They spread the ball around. There's so much talent. And then, what you mentioned, Pat, the defensive side of the ball, what they've been able to do against this Hawaii offense has been putting up some gaudy numbers. Yeah, that, that pass rush has been all over oh. Moniz, and the, that's why it was, was a good call to hit him with that draw play there. But, but I mean, they, their front line, their front four is no joke. How about Jeremy Avery? He's got what the a, touchdown runs, and he returns the kickoff all the way up to the 48. Another one of their weapons. That's it, running back. And even with they've had the tight end injuries, but a bunch of receivers, uh, big plays today, and they were running back. So I have a question for you. With what's going on with TCU and Utah, are you going to swap out buses maybe and hop on the <laughs> TCU one and start I driving that one? Cause, gotta, yeah, got to give mean, them a lot of respect. I mean, to go into Salt Lake and blow them out, I, you know, I kind of wondered if, if Utah was a little overrated just on basis of, of not having played too many people, but, uh, but still, to do that to them was really, really impressive. Kellen Moore's day is over. The best day of his collegiate career in spite of throwing two interceptions, had the three touchdown passes over 500 yards. Jarvis Hodge with Joe Southwick now at quarterback. Picks up 14. And how about Penn State's comeback? Here they come, Dari. Pam, the comeback is complete now if the defense can hold. Here it is. Once down, 21 zip. Silas Red, touchdown Lions. They're up 28-21 in Joe Paterno's quest for 400. At one point, Northwestern led that game 21 to nothing. Now four straight touchdowns for Penn State. First down run by Jarvis Hodge, who picks up four yards. Well, I mean, how does Utah, I mean, does it, they get ranked no, five in the country. I just feel they had no business being that high. It's just there's too, too many flaws in the system. There are. I, I agree with you, Danny, no doubt about it. And, you know, one of the things I think a lot of us put too much stock in them beating Pittsburgh at the beginning of the year, thinking Pittsburgh was going to be real good. And the problem is you get into voting, you get into kind of slot voting, and other teams lose, so you just keep moving them up without even really paying much attention to who they've beaten. And really, they had played the bottom half of the Mountain West, and that's not a real tough league at the bottom. And, and so I think that had kind of artificially inflated uh, their worth. 
See, that's why I think they should go. I, I know it'll never happen. So obviously, we need a playoff. But I think with the the polling, the voting, I think it should start mid-October. You know, let people see what people are made of, who they're playing. We'll find out the pit wasn't that good. Then you slot them. You have more accurate slots of where people are, and you don't get these you know, off-kilter uh, rankings. I totally agree with you. The one problem there, I mean, the Harris Poll does start voting in mid-October, and they still have mirrored basically what's going on right. in the other polls. But if those other polls had all start at the same time, then maybe get a more realistic look. Drew Wright, number 39, and now the tailback. Just about everybody getting a chance to play for Boise, and Drew is taken down immediately. Let's take a look at some BCS bowl projections if the season ended today. Well, the clear, flagrant flaw in that is yeah. no who's, Boise State. Who's missing? Yeah. 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 And I mean, you know, if it comes to that, then that's a travesty in my opinion. I mean, we're watching this team here, and you can argue, I think the, we can have a healthy argument over whether they should be number one, two, three, or four, but if they're not in those, right. one of those five bowls, then that's a joke. 100%. I 100% agree with you there. Kyle Bratzman, guys, is trying a 52-yard field goal. He's been out with a hurt leg. And they have him out there kicking from 52. Didn't make it. So Boise State didn't score. <laughs> with their second-string quarterback in, Chris, P Chris Peterson's team with a very chunky 42-7 lead over... Hawaii. Well, we pat 40 when we come back to Boise. ESPNU College Football All-State Game of the Week. Brought to you by All-State. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects you like All-State. Are you in good hands? Welcome back to Boise State. Some of the great helmets they've had, the great tradition at Boise State, impressively leading Hawaii now 42 to 7. Bryant Moniz out of the game. New quarterback in for Hawaii. It is Shane Austin, a junior from California. Moniz, a very tough afternoon. Austin throws it. Nope, that's no play. We have a flag on the field. Before the ball can be snapped. Ball start, number 51, offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. Dari Noka has another update for us, Dari. It is getting wild on the plains. Ames, Iowa. Now, the Cyclones were down 24-10 to Nebraska when Austin Arno ran one in, so it's 24-17. The Huskers fumbled, and almost immediately after that, Arnaud with a touchdown pass to Alexander Robinson. They are tied at 24, Nebraska and Iowa State. Thank you, Dar. We are back here. Not nearly the suspense in this game. Pam Ward, Danny Cano, Jess Mendoza, and Pat Forty now joining us on a beautiful day in Boise. Alex Green, the running back, had a 54-yard touchdown run. Runs out of bounds after a 13-yard carry. Pat Forty joining us up here, and I, I love debating the, the BCS debate whether Boise should be in the national title game, but something else that really came to my attention was the Cam Newton story, which you helped break. Yes, sir. What can you tell us? Is there any updates to that, or is well, it? Well, you know, Auburn very confident that uh, he's eligible. They played him today, uh, and, you know, Newton talked to the media afterwards and basically said it's, it's out of his control from what I've been able to gather, and... Uh, you know, it's it's going to be one of those situations where you kind of wait and see to see what the NCAA is going to do. This is kind of in, in the NCAA's court now, Danny. And, um, you know, it, it, our story did not allege that Auburn did anything wrong, didn't allege that the Newton family was in cahoots with Kenny Rogers, the former Mississippi State player who allegedly solicited the payment. But, uh, you know, it certainly does throw, you know, a, a real monkey wrench into the proceedings just for, for Auburn on a day-to-day -day basis. And you, you're looking ahead saying, you know, what, where is this going to lead? We're just not sure yet. Warriors got a first down. Backup quarterback Shane Austin in there. Completed over to Greg Salas. I believe that's only the second catch of the day for Salas. 
Guy who came in leading the nation with 81 catches has two today. Yeah, Boise did a great job of figuring out the slot game for Hawaii, which is typically where the ball goes in the run and shoot offense and has done a great job of shutting that down. Hurt also with the absence of Kealoha Polaris, who was out there for one play, hurt his hamstring last week against Idaho and has been unable to play. for Boise State. Closing in on 700 next time they get the ball. That pass is delivered at the feet of Pollard. The best day on the other sideline for Kellen Moore and Bryant Moniz coming in, leading the country in total offense, only 83 total yards today. And really, he was harassed all afternoon, watching the coverage. There weren't many places to go with the football and talking to Nick Rolovich, their offensive coordinator. Brian Moniz will be back. He'll Shrug this one off and be right back to putting up those 400-yard days. Sacked seven times today by this Boise State defense. Here's a third and four. Austin completes it, but tackled about a yard short of the first down is Dustin Blunt. Pat, I'm curious as far as how this, you know, we talk a lot about the Heisman race and Cam Newton. Obviously, everybody's front runner, four touchdowns today again. How do you think this will affect his Heisman hopes? That's a great question, you know, because, uh, you know, I'm a voter, and in 2005, I cast a vote that would end up being meaningless for Reggie Bush. And, I, you know, I, you look back and say, gosh, I wish we had known then what we know now. Well, you know, with this sort of cloud hanging over, you wonder if voters might just be a little bit hesitant. As of what we know right now, I think it would be unfair to penalize Cameron Newton from a voting standpoint. I just, you know, there's not enough out there to say that he doesn't deserve it. And on fourth and one, the snap goes over the head of Austin. Austin picks it up, but it's Boise State ball in great field position yet again around the 27-yard line. That kind of maybe a microcosm of the kind of day that Hawaii has had. They lost 27 yards because of the long snap. Pat, here's a look at my top five. Really, it's a three-man race in my mind. Do you yeah. agree? Yes, I do. I agree. I, I have Newton and Moore very close, and, uh, you know, I thought Kellen Moore looked the part today very much so. Uh, I know Hawaii's defense is not superb, but just I thought total command of the game, some great play fakes, some great throws, and LaMichael James is third. And then I do have Luck as my fourth guy, too, and then fifth is kind of jump ball. But yeah. I think the first three it's are a revolving are, door, that yeah. fifth spot. Yeah. <laughs> Jarvis Hodge in at running back. Joe Southwick. In relief of Kellen Moore at quarterback. And Hodge is able to break free close to another first down. With the uh, with the strength of schedule hurting Boise State's standings in the BCS, do you think it also hurts Kellen Moore as far as where, you know, his competition? I mean, I talked earlier about Cam Newton, who he's going to be playing down the stretch. Sure. And if he's able to produce there, you look at Kellen Moore's last few games, I mean, is that going to hurt him? I think so. I mean, you know, voters are certainly going to look at that. And just judging from my Twitter feed today, I mean, <laughs> nobody wants to give Kellen Moore credit for anything for this game. If you're, if you're certainly if you're an Auburn fan or a Cameron Newton backer, they just, you know, you're playing a JV defense and that sort of thing, which is unfair in my opinion. Snap handled, good job by Southwick to gather it in and then hand it off to Hodge, who picked up the first down. Korea in on the stop, and there is the remaining schedule for Boise. Obviously, the Nevada game's got to be circled. I think that's a big one. You know, Nevada's a legitimate team. That's on the road in Reno uh, on a huge day, November 26th, when Alabama plays Auburn, when uh, Oregon plays Arizona. So there's uh, there's a lot going on on that day, and I think Heisman voters will be watching real closely how that game goes. All right, Mr. Forty, I'm going to make a little point here, though. In the Nevada game, what you just said is important. Hawaii beat Nevada. Yeah, so, you know what? Hawaii <laughs> tough on the island. Tough on the island. <laughs> Hodge, both hands on the football on first down. Gets it down inside the 10. Paredes coming up with another stop for Hawaii. There's no doubt in my mind that Kellen Moore is the best passing quarterback in the country. I mean, just what he does. I don't care if you're running a seven-on-seven -seven drill, which is a lot of what his offense turns into because he has so much time. But the, the efficiency, it doesn't matter. If you're going against seven-on-seven, seven, the 19 completions in a row today, it's still yeah. phenomenal. Great. Yeah, super accuracy and just total command of that offense. Boise with 699 yards of offense. Drew Wright with the ball. Gets him over the hump. 701 now for them today. 
How do you think Boise State is going to do in the style points category for this win this afternoon? I think they put in plenty. You know, I mean, you're winning by 35 points against a, been a very hot team. Uh, was just on the on the verge of getting into the top 25 with the voters. Uh, 700 yards of offense, and you know they did the right thing too. They took Kellen Moore out when the game was decided. So uh, you know I think I think they put plenty on the board. Now you know is it going to pay a little bit in comparison to what TCU did? Mm -hmm. Yes, but this is still an impressive showing I think by Boise. Third and three. Right, gets the first down. Will be first and goal at the two as a flag comes in behind the play. And another one. A little saltiness on the field right now. Well, Hawaii's got to be yeah. frustrated. I mean, we talked to him, and, and this obviously is not what they had in mind. They thought they could at least move the ball and get some points. But the Boise State defense has been terrific. Hawaii coming into this game, averaging 39 points per game. They had won six straight ball games, unbeaten in the WAC. And they're about to go with a thud to second in the whack behind Boise. That's one thing I would say, Pan, the Boise defense, uh, you know, just a lot of people think this is a finesse league and they don't mm. play that much defense. Boise defense is legitimate. And you look around, there were a lot of defenses that laid down today and gave up huge points back. all over the country. Two in the offense. Ten yard penalty. There was also a dead ball, personal foul, on the offense number 42. That penalty will be enforced after the block in the back. It'll be first down. And, and third, we, repeat third down, excuse me. We were talking about it, you know, over the break, that Boise State really is almost in a no-win situation because if they win big, people are tweeting you, telling you it's a cupcake game. Right. If it's close, they say we should have blown them out. So Coach Peterson's really in a bind with he is <laughs> how's in, he supposed to win. I agree. You know, and he's, he's handled this awfully well, I think, Danny. I mean, he just, you know what, he's just said, we're, I'm going to try to pay as little attention to all that stuff as necessary. I'm going to coach the team the, the, my way no matter what. You know, he pulls the play, pulls his starters out at the appropriate time. Uh, you know, they keep running their offense, but they're not trying to throw the ball into the end zone. I, I think he's handling it very, very well. Four receivers in after the penalties. It's third and 18. Keep it on the ground. To right. Fans, fans aren't that happy that they stayed conservative on that. Let's go down to Jessica with the report. Jess. Thanks, Pam. I talked to Coach Peterson yesterday, and I asked him, you know, why do you stay at Boise State when you get so many other big offers to go elsewhere? And he said, you know what? To me, this is the big offer. A lot of people don't see Boise State the way I do, but this is exactly where I want to be. What do you think about that, Pat? I think it's, well, you know what? Look, the, he, he saw what happened to the two guys that preceded him that put Boise on the map. Dirk Cutter went to Arizona State and got fired. Dan Hawkins is probably going to get fired at Colorado, especially after today. And, and you know what? He's smart. He's got a great thing here. Southwick taking off. It's, you know, a great place for his family to live. He's beloved. He's being paid very well. He's obviously he's got to, he's become a great recruiting recruiter for this niche here and and I mean, it's just it's all working and he's smart enough I think to look around and see the cautionary tales elsewhere. Yeah, I think and I think everything you've heard about the city of Boise what a great place it is to live. Yeah. Pat Forty, thank you so much for stopping by and and for putting up the good fight for <laughs> Boise. We'll thank see you, you on the experts. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Take a time out. We'll be back with more football. Well, welcome back to Boise, Idaho. Home of the Broncos, very impressively leading Hawaii 42 to 7. Another sold out crowd. Time to look at our good hands play brought to you by Allstate. Kellen Moore off the play action. Showing off a little arm strength. I think one of the knocks against him is that he can't move the ball downfield, but showed plenty of it there on the long pass to Titus Young. Wide open, and boy. It's hard to pick one play that Kellen Moore had because he had so many of them. That was an 83-yard touchdown play, the longest play of the year for Boise State. 4.13 left to go. Cheesy Demude in, first time that he has carried the ball for Hawaii. Kellen Moore today, career high 507 yards passing, 30 of 37 through the air. At one point, he completed 19 straight passes in the first half. He set Boise State's new career touchdown pass record. Three TDs today, but two interceptions, which is really rare for him. 
but just a, a magical day and his day ended early put the ball cap on you know we've seen his backup in there 700 yards of offense and made it's a, still made not going to be enough <laughs> he made a strong case for those heisman voters though catch by billy ray stutzman his first catch of the day honolulu native picks up four one thing Chris Peterson, when we met with him yesterday, he said, we're not trying to live up to expectations. And, and, and he hears it all the time. He's heard it from folks on our network, all the other networks. And he says that's what really, that's the chip on their shoulder is when people tell them what they have to do. He's like, we know what we have to do. And a lot of times he hears what people tell him they have to do. And he sits there and goes, no, we don't. We don't have to do that. You know what I love what he said? He said, whatever happened to just winning? Right. <laughs> Which is true. I mean, wh why, why should it have to be style points? Throw to the outside to Blunt. He picks up the first down. We pick up another update from Dari the Updater. Well, guys, you talk about Kellen Moore being a Heisman candidate right there with Cam Newton. So is LaMichael James. Three touchdowns on the day, 121 yards as Oregon is pulling away now from Washington in the fourth. All right, Dari, he is number two on Danny's list. He is. He's just a step ahead of Kellen Moore in Really, look at it, it's, it's just, and there is something with style points, because with Cam Newton, he plays with a lot of charisma, like Michael James, a lot of electricity. Kellen Moore, very steady. Che Cheesy Demude, another great name with the with his second carry. So would you like to see Kellen be more charismatic? He just goes out there, throws the ball, 500 yards, boom, 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 three touchdowns. Well, I think it. I think it's this, what we talked about with Pat Forty. I think it's the voters get caught up in the, the persona of a Heisman type player. And because he's so even keeled, plays so consistently, I think they kind of get bored with it. They're like, oh, well, Kellen Moore had another great day. <laughs> and well, it's, and it's, it's a tragedy, it. yeah, it is. He's a terrific quarterback. But Kellen Moore's got guys draped all over him, dragging him into the end zone, rushing for 200 yards as well. Pass incomplete. And remember Kellen Moore, he's a junior from Prosser, Washington, West Coast guy. His other offers, Eastern Washington and Idaho, <laughs> the only other teams other than Boise State that really wanted this kid, and that is just unbelievable. And he's a kid who's who's listed at six feet tall. Is that it? Because he, he was kind of small. You just you just don't understand how how many teams could this kid help, and they passed on him. Well, I think that's a tribute to Coach Peterson and the job they do recruiting here at Boise State with finding gems. I mean, they find a lot of diamonds in the rough, and going out and getting players that believe in the system, that love football, and there's a lot that goes into that. Third down, hard hit as that pass is incomplete. Antoine Murray in there putting the lick in. And in fact, Coach Peterson said that in his 10 years, they've only had two four-star recruits, and he said he didn't even know who they were. <laughs> they don't look at that stuff. They bring the guys in, and, and the, his players who host the recruits, they have veto power. He will listen to them if they say, now, nah, you know, Coach, this kid isn't going to fit in. He's not going to buy into the program, and they'll just let him go. And that's what it is. It's a mindset. It's a, it's a way of life almost for Boise State, the way they come in here. It's a, it's a get after it. We're going to be very blue collar. We're going to work hard, and we're going to win games. Dunaki with another punt. Kicks that one out of bounds. Chris Peterson talking to his uh, assistant head coach today. 719 total yards, close to the school record that they set in 2003 against Louisiana Tech. Let's see. We got to talk to Stephen Kinsey yesterday, and he was a great, great young man and having a blast. Got to break the team down. You see him there talking to the assistant coaches in the booth, and I asked him, I said, hey, Stephen, if they come out sluggish, are you going to chew them out? And he said, oh, yeah. <laughs> he wasn't afraid. But I don't think he had to do too much yelling today. Here for the Wake, uh, Make a Wish Foundation. He's from San Antonio and loves Boise State. That's that's awesome. And Chris Peterson treating him very well. Put, has the headset on. Jarvis Hodge with another carry as we approach a minute to go. Now, Pam, if he's an assistant coach and this is his first game, it's his first big win, doesn't he deserve a Gatorade bath? I mean, I, you, I think it'd be great. It'd complete the experience for him. <laughs> Ruin that nice white shirt, but I don't think that Steven would mind one bit. 
It was great seeing Steven break the team down. Kellen Moore presented him with a, a team ball with his name on it. And great to see Steven get to complete a wish. Mike Coughlin in now, the third quarterback we have seen for Boise, senior from San Diego. Hands it off, there's a first down run for Jarvis Hodge, who has done some good work, the senior from Phoenix. So Chris Peterson's team with a very impressive win over Hawaii, taking them down 42 to seven, breaking Hawaii's six game win streak, sending Hawaii to its first loss in the WAC. Boise State proving that they belong in the championship conversation. The national championship conversation, Mr. Cannell. Still a lot of games to play out. They still could. 22 straight wins now for Boise State. And they did set a new record, that last run by Hodge, 732 yards of offense broken because they had five more today. So Kellen Moore with his best day, 507 yards and three touchdowns, and a record offensive performance for Boise State as they go to 8-0 on the season. Six days from now, they will take on arch rival Idaho as they try to march towards another unbeaten season. Hawaii falls to seven and three on the season and now five and one in the WAC. Greg McMacken will take his team back to the beautiful islands after, after they just got a smackdown by Boise State. Jessica Mendoza is down there with Coach Peterson. Well, Coach, Kellen Moore, career high 507 yards. Tell me a little about your quarterback today. <laughs> He's a good player. He did a great job. He did. The line protected for him. The receivers made plays. But the guys that I'm thinking about right now is our defense. I mean, Hawaii is extremely explosive. They got really good players. And uh, to hold them like we did, I mean, we're just really proud of our defense. Well, speaking of your defense and your offense, what are going to be your main goals as you close out the WAC se season in the next few weeks? Well, it's just still one game at a time. You know, every week is just a new challenge. Everybody's so different in our conference. You know, Hawaii's run and shoot. And now we go to more of a conventional team against Idaho. So you got to redial it up and be a lot of emotion in the Idaho game. It's a rivalry game. So that's kind of our next task. Thanks a lot, Coach. Thank you. All right, thanks a lot, Jess. And Coach Peterson's right. His defense was absolutely terrific. Hawaii averaging 39 points per game, 396 yards through the air, first in the nation, but they were totally dominated, losing 42-7 to today. Sports Center U is next, followed at 7 Eastern by Louisiana Lafayette and Ole Miss. This has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Danny Cannell, Jessica Mendoza, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Pam Ward. Thanks for joining us. Boise State, a school record 737 yards of offense. They win it. Let's go to Dari in the studio.